Hi everybody, my name is Jessica Holyfield and I'm a professional dance choreographer and dance educator based out of the southeast of the United States and we're going to be taking a look at a class by Akhenin from Summer Jam Dance Camp entitled In Too Deep. This is a Patreon request, shout out to Jacob for the request. Also, give Jacob a special shout out because Jacob's been a part of my In The Pocket tier for six months months. So I am more than delighted to always be able to look at content that Jacob recommends. And so if you ever see them in the comments, give them a big shout out. And thank you if you like this class. I have a good feeling because Jacob's been giving us some bangers over the months. It's going to be good. So let's go ahead and check it out. Yeah. Oh my God. Part of me really wanted Super Kill to last so much longer so we could see more choreo from them because I really loved what they brought to the table. Hey, is that Jin Jinu? I think he was there, so my gut tells me yes. If you don't know, he's on a crew 82 as well as Ambitious. Oh, this group's going to be fire. Ugh, but we're here. We're going to talk about Akanen first. So if you don't know, with Summer Jam Dance Camp, uh, pretty much most of the teachers that teach for the camp are affiliated with Jam Republic Agency. There was a show called Street Woman Fighter. There's also a show Street Man Fighter. And a lot of the people that we're going to be seeing in these videos that we've seen, uh, we've seen them in the time on the show. Akanin was on a crew called Subakil. I really loved her movement quality. Very impressed with her. My God tells me this is Jinwoo. He represented Ambitious from Street Man Fighter. He was also on the show Be Ambitious to make it on the crew. Um, but he also has a crew called 82. Now, here we go. Do you see how different they do the entire choreography? Part of me, like, we're going to look at Akanen's perspective of doing it, her fullness, and then you see more of the conversational, reserved, laid-back perspective that Janu does. I'll just call him that until somebody tells me it's not him. I'm just going to assume it is. Uh, well, you know what? Let me go, let me go digging in the comments. I think the comments verified it, so we're just gonna roll with it. Here we go. The pull on this, notice that they're pulling the energy to the back, like they're getting drug along, but what's really nice is there's a huge rotation happening in the chest, allowing the knee to invert to the inside to make it a really nice ball change moment, and it goes psh, psh, so it kinda has that accent with a pull to the sound, and that's how she reflects it in her movement. I love it. From there, take it through, nice little slide, notice that there's not, I mean, both of them, they take a different approach with how they're looking. Whenever, just something interesting, if you ever wanted to think about it, whenever you watch dancers, be on the lookout of where they're looking. Because a lot of times when you see a dancer who looks very comfortable, they're looking not just to the front or glued to a mirror equivalence, like always looking to the front, but they're looking at what they're doing. They're making choices and allowing the body to feel instead of having to look at yourself or make sure that whoever you want to watch is watching, you know? So I think it was really nice that we're going to be able to see that a lot here. And this is, uh, hopefully, this shows people and it gives people a sense of encouragement seeing that they are so different, yet they're both justified in matching the blueprint of the choreo, Akanen's choreo, right? But it's just, it's so, it's so different. We can appreciate the beauty of both, right? So... I love that, hitting it through. Notice she goes, boom, nice. She hits that bass a little bit heavier. Jinu makes it more conversational. Love that. 
that little talk to me. He keeps it more isolated and he keeps the body projecting more towards front. She ends up rotating it a little bit more and digging it a little bit deeper. You could also tell based on where their hips are hinging, you have Jinu projecting more front. She's rotating it more to the side, right? Subtle, but different. Also where they're looking is different as well. Bringing it through with da-da-da. Notice for uh, Akanen is very clear. Honestly, I think she her movement is so clear and full. Da-da-da. And then Jinu, it really feels very subtle, subdued almost. But both look great. The pull through right there, notice he really accented that last little movement there where he pulls in opposition of the arms and lets that lets the lower body dig a little deeper into the ground, digging it through little Ranajam, taking that leg, dragging it across the floor, placing the weight on the standing leg to allow that illusion to take place to get them transitioned to the other side. I love that. The little heel toe variant happening and letting the upper body influence how that looks because if you keep it stiff that's going to be a different vibe than if you're going to add a little body roll action to it so it's fun to see the choices there you also can see how with Akan and she's pushing her weight more towards the back to allow more of a rock to present in her movement quality Jin who was kind of staying more uh, I'm not I'm not gonna call it stiff, but he does he how he moves is very similar in that like his movement quality is something I'm very familiar with. Akanen, not as much, um, but I've seen them both in their respective shows. So I know enough to be able to kind of tell their their these are intentional choices they're both making. Notice with him, he does the pull. He's really accenting the extremities are really causing what the the main essence of the choreo is more so than a a Akanen. Akanen is, is using more of her torso to make these moments uh, accented, which is cool. Right there. Ooh, do you see how she committed to that? That was gorgeous. I love once again, too, he, what Jinu is doing, it really feels that he is trying to make Akanen look good. So whenever you do partners or whenever you have people that do choreo in pairs, that's something that's I was told a while ago, but it's actually really great advice. So you can take this with a grain of salt or not, but I didn't say this, but it's something I do uh, try to live by when I when I do partners like this. Um, try to make your partner look good. Like don't do it, just bring yourself the glory, but like do do make your choices to where it complements what you're, what, who's dancing with you does. Because notice that's what Jinwoo is doing. He's making choices that are framing Akanen very well. You know, he's always trying to be off her corner. Yes, she's the teacher, but also it's a she, uh, she's living in her own world and Jinwoo is complimenting and adding embellishments to it to make her shine even more. So that's what I appreciate is you can very clearly see that, especially if there's an interaction in a transition that we're going to see. It's really nice to, to look at. I love that. And once again, he just brings his arms up. It was a nice little party moment. Probably a ball change. They dig into it, letting the accent of the uh, focal point being the torso. Notice that she's leaning. There's a lot of leaning happening with opposition of the chest to wherever her hips or her legs and weight is going. That's really nice. I always try to push that in my own students because they come from a posture background in the studio world where ballet and jazz are very tight and stiff be and that's where you get you know uh ballet dancers trying to do hip-hop they look very awkward that's why is their movement quality is fluent in a different language of movement it's not that they're bad it's just their body's not fluent yet and it just takes time to wiggle out the the gra grammatical things between the different movements and so i try to push my dancers to try to do grooves the way Akanen is doing it and then they can have the freedom of choice to con converse like Jinu. Both are beautiful ways, they're just different fonts, right? Just like people talk in different tone, different cultures, this is what we're able to see here and that's what makes dance so beautiful to look at and that's what I love whenever you look at a class like this and you're able to see them be so different but both accepted. I love that. It's not an audition, it's a class. I like that too, where they go and they have a little extra rotation before they take that energy more towards the front. Notice he's watching her. Like I said, he's trying to make her look good, right? It, yes, it's her class, I, like I already said, but I really appreciate the fact he's being very intentional with a lot of his choices. And I'm, I'm a fan of that. That's cool. I like to dig on that, that push and push. Notice he's a little bit more reserved, keeps with the character that he's wanting to showcase and posture. She's going more full. I like her usage of the back for that. She goes, makes it main. Notice they let their head go with that. Love that. Stepping forward. Then they, honestly, whenever they throw and they let their head go, it allows their weight to go towards the back. So whenever they have this pull that go towards the front, it's fuller because they naturally, through where their head is going, make it and set it up to where we have more energy to push. I really like that. Make it a nice moment, sitting it back down. 
I love that she hits it there, honestly, boom, nice little accent there, picking it through, ding, ding, nice, and then you have a little up bounce, isolated wave, and then we hit it in the accent with a nice little kick to boot, I like that DDD, I've seen that in a lot of K-pop choreo, because that's a lot of the content I look at, but I like seeing it, that DDD, you're able to hit that DDD in the back, I love that, nice, nice range of the arms for that too, now notice they're sitting on the right side, that twist there, boom, boom, notice she lets her body complement that, then now we have our weight on the left foot to allow our right to do whatever we need, but notice he keeps his more centered, but Akanen moved hers way over to the left side, so hers felt more like a whip action of her foot and her leg, but Jinu's felt more like just an accent, you know, not a whip. So just the dynamic was a little different. Hers was more crescendoed or more like, whoosh, you know, which is just the sound version of a whip, like what I just said. But I like it. Notice too, she's really digging. There's another body roll. I don't know how she taught this. We're going to look at some of the other groups to see what the overlap movement qualities are. I don't know if this is her go-to posture reset. Uh, cause Jinwoo just really just pushes his energy forward. Now they're kind of doing their own thing. I like that. There's a little shamrock that happens doing their own thing. And then we're kind of digging it through. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about, right? Love it. He's going, he approaches, makes it a nice moment. They go move it over. Look at that. A little, uh, uh, okay. That's flirty, flirty, flirty. I like it. It's a good vibe. And that's the end of da -na -na. I like that. Fun. And now he gets to have his little moment. He's going around. Camera's still there. She said, let's go. Let's see it. Love that he brings it through. This is all freestyle. So I won't really touch too much on it. Love it. Notice he's able to unlock his torso. So you can also, you know, his choices a lot of times come off of more hinges and a lot of accents from the hips and the pecs. Like right here is where you see a lot of his movement. Um, but it is nice whenever you see Jin who pursue a more legato approach, but it's still very conversational and subtle. So it's nice. I like that. D -d 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 -d. That was a cool choice from him. Bringing it through a little pot of ray action. D -d 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 -d. Something flew off. I don't know what flew off, but that's a vibe. I like uh, love it. I just love the fact that we have so many different people from all over the world that have such a common, you know, like right here with Latrice and her brother. Like Latrice was on Jam Republic crew from Street Woman Fighter, so she's well acquaintances with Akanen now. Who knows if they were acquainted before the show? So like so many people are taking each other's classes as colleagues and as friends. And I love that because it feels more communal feels intentional and it feels like such a vibe and it feels like a continuation of the Street Fighter franchise but like on the dancers terms does that make sense because with Mnet I despise Mnet on their editing and how they treat their contestants on shows that they have specifically idol based shows not a fan of it. I, I really feel like they have a huge, uh, huge battles, huge obstacles they need to overcome to be better at that. Um, but that's probably what I'm really liking about the summer jam classes is that I'm able to really enjoy what they're doing, see it as a class, but be able to appreciate them and the relationship that they have without the um, oppressive nature that Mnet brings of their controlled chaos, I think is my in general note. So, but yeah, just wanted to say that. I love seeing them here. Let's go ahead and look at Latrice. Look at that. Love the fullness on that. Look at that. Look at how she digs within that. So freaking sick. Golly. Notice that her brother has more, I don't, his name escapes me, so I know he does music too, right? But once again, it's very similar to Akanen and Jinwoo as you have Latrice and her brother, right? Kabamba? Yeah, but also note too, it would be weird if he made choices similar to Jinwoo in this case because they're related, right? Does that make sense? Love it. Yes, Akanen's living in it. Turning it through. Ah, yes, ma'am. Look at that syncopate on the hips. Akanen's living. Oh, you got super kill in the building. Ah! Oh, my God. Do you see how full? She's freaking water. That looks like Momo, right? Freaking water. Like, but like not just water, a freaking tidal wave. Like, so full smooth. I admire people who have that type of movement quality. And also shout out to my other Super Kill member. She's freaking, I've seen her in pretty much all the classes. So you see, she's training, she's putting in the work. Love it. I love that see me. That was cute. 
Nice shamrock, once again, not the same. So everybody gets to kind of do their own thing. Okay, so who's who's in this group? It does feel like just, it just feels like a select group. Love it. So this is technically probably one of the first classes that I'm looking at where it feels like we're looking at students quicker. Because the rest of them, yes, they're students, but all of them are affiliated with Jam Republic in some way or just connections, right? Here's the thing, I'm fine with that. I love seeing it. But I don't really, there's a good chance some of them may be teachers, but not really familiar with a lot of them. Love it. Nice little swipes on the floor. Love that. Ooh, yep, we got our leader from Jam, Baby Jam Republic from Street Dance Girl Fighter over on stage left. Others don't quite feel familiar, but I love it. Yeah. Notice there's such a variety of people interpreting the choreo, right? Some are taking a more subtle choreographic approach. So it does feel like Akana may be focusing more on retention and trusting the dancers with their own perspective, which I value. I think there's beauty in that. Wow. I like also how short the choreo is. Five, six, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, four, two. Nice. Five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Six, eight counts. Five, six, seven, eight, seven. Yeah. So six to eight counts of content and the rest is more interpretive. I love that. That's a sweet spot. For me, I love me just good four eight counts and party. Like, I love that. It sets my brain up for success. Nice. You can tell some people are making different syncopated choices. Could be a musicality growing thing. And also, who knows what when this class happened either. I really feel like, just being very honest, I really feel like a lot of people don't understand the physical drain it is to take more than one class a day. It is. I mean, I used to do it when I was in high school. I was a competitive dancer for in studios, and I uh, would go to conventions, and you take about five five classes a day. They're each about 45 minutes to an hour, but it's just go, 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 and it's all content. And so your brain just goes on overload, and then you, a lot of times you compete that evening, and so you have that adrenaline, and, chor and choreography is a straight sprint on your body. And so these dancers putting in the work multiple classes a day, you know, regardless if it's the first day or if it's the last, like, I, not for, yeah, first day or last day, your brain is going to respond differently. And so the fact is they're building their, um, their, like their stamina, their endurance physically, their mental stamina, their emotional stamina. There are, they're getting a lot of implicit training on a lot of these different overlaps of movement. Cause there are some overlaps between the choreographers that you see some of the grooves are similar, which is nice and can be helpful for some of them because they are allowed that opportunity to get it in their body in an expedited way. Because when you are in a survival environment, which is something like this, where you have X amount of time to get something. So your brain, like goes into fight or flight a little bit uh, it allows you to retain and pick up information at an expedited rate like I've stated so I really like seeing and I always value even if people make mistakes especially when people make mistakes on camera you I'm not going to sit here it's not because they're incompetent no they're students that's their job is to understand and absorb not to be the best person in the room even the teacher their job Akinen is not her job to be the best dancer in the room is to teach and give people information and knowledge to be able to grow them as humans and as students that's the goal for everybody and I really think so far that I've seen in all of the classes with Summer Jam you're able to see that, whether it's through colleague interaction, whether it's through student to teacher interaction. I love the participants and how we're seeing them in the class, right? So you see some people really trying to fight for it. I'm so thankful and appreciative for them to have the courage to go in front of a camera. Not perfect, right? This is not perfect. 
you know, and I am totally okay with that. Akanin probably didn't do it perfect to her standards either, but I appreciate her courage to do it too, because she probably, you can put a lot of pressure on yourself as a teacher of, you know, I did the choreo, so I have to be the best in the room. Not, not exactly. Just because you're good at movement doesn't mean you're a good teacher. And based on, you know, seeing all the groups that we had, it looked like she was pretty successful in articulating and getting her perspective across through her students to where they can replicate it and put in their own perspective on it too. That's, always a joy to see and I'm really really happy we got to look at this. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch. Thank you Jacob for the request. This has been wonderful. If you want to see more content like this, I have it all over YouTube but I will always have more on Patreon. I also early release everything I make on Patreon first. So like this video. Um, so if that's something that interests you, it's there. But if you're fine with just hanging out with us on YouTube and the discussions to follow, I think that's also super fun and enjoyable as well. Once again, my name is Jess. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the flip side. Bye.